There's a group in Israel called Breaking the Silence. What they do is they interview um, different soldiers and officers in the Israeli Defense Forces uh, after an operation to try to determine what happened and if they followed the rules of war. Well, the news is not good. Okay, first let me uh, have, quote the Independent here as they explain what happened. Breaking the Silence is an Israeli group uh, that has spent the eight months since the end of the war, known as Operation Protective Edge, interviewing more than 60 members of the Israeli Army, Air Force, and Navy, including soldiers and officers, up to the rank of major. Now, uh, they had 100 testimonies overall, they had a 240-page report, they spent a lot of time, and their sources are all inside the Israeli Defense Forces. Now, remember that there was 2,200 Palestinians killed uh, during this operation, uh, and mostly civilians, the great majority of civilians, according to the United Nations. Now, uh, it turns out when you talk to the soldiers on the ground, the Israeli soldiers, a lot of them knew that. Now, a lot of them spoke to uh, breaking the silence, but gave context too. For example, they said a large number of soldiers maintained that the way in which the war was conducted was reasonable, but have decided to speak out against particular decisions or practices. And some of the other soldiers thought, no, uh, what we did was not reasonable, we did it on purpose, and they also spoke out. So let me give you quotes from all these different soldiers that they talked to. Here's a staff sergeant. The instructions are to shoot right away. Whoever you spot, be they armed or unarmed, no matter what. The instructions are very clear. Any person you run into that you see with your eyes, shoot to kill. It's an explicit instruction. So don't try to figure out if they're Hamas, they're not Hamas. You're inside Gaza. If you see someone with your eyes, I don't know what else you would see them with. In other words, anyone you see, shoot to kill immediately. This is not us saying it, this is not the Palestinians saying it, these are people who are inside the Israeli military. Okay. Uh, another uh, tank sergeant in this case says, we were firing purposelessly all day long. Hamas was nowhere to be seen. Okay. Now it makes you wonder, well, all those civilian deaths, were they really an accident? Or did you want to intimidate the population by firing all day long, even though you couldn't spot Hamas at all? Okay, well, uh, the Breaking the Silence report has more details on this. While the testimonies include pointed descriptions of inappropriate behavior by soldiers in the field, the more disturbing picture that arises from these testimonies reflects systematic policies that were dictated to IDF forces of all ranks and in all zones. Th that's really the heart of it here, because Look, I know you can blame individual soldiers, uh, but uh, in the US it happens as well. Rumsfeld says, unleash the hounds. There are no rules anymore. And then when someone commits torture, they turn around and go, oh, they blame the soldier. But no, Rumsfeld gave the order, our Secretary of Defense, Dick Cheney clearly gave the order, but they're too high uh, to punish. Now, in this case, you really got to give some of these Israeli soldiers a ton of credit because they're brave enough and principled enough to come out and say what we did was wrong. Okay. Now, there is a propaganda war on both fronts. They know that, and they even talk about it here later in the report. But they say, we've got to tell what is true and what is right. And what, what we did oftentimes was not the right thing to do, and we knew it. Okay. More from the report. The guiding military principle of minimum risk uh, to our forces, even at the cost of harming innocent civilians, alongside efforts to deter and intimidate the Palestinians, led to massive and unprecedented harm to the population and civilian infrastructure in the Gaza Strip. Policymakers could have predicted these results prior to the operation and were surely aware of them throughout. Now, one of the soldiers uh, talks about how, you know, we, they do the knock principle, like they send a small bomb that didn't do much damage on the roof uh, of the building they were about to annihilate, and they would say, well, look, we knocked, that was our knock, and then you had to get out of the building. Sometimes, though, they'd have what they considered high value targets in the building. They know there's a ton of civilians in the building. So they'd be like, oh, go ahead and knock, and then launch the bigger bomb 30 seconds later, giving no one a realistic chance to run out of that building. And But they can turn around and go, what, what, what? We knocked, we knocked, we sent the smaller bomb first. We sent the other one really quickly thereafter. And remember, Gaza Strip is a tiny, tiny amount of. Uh, land, it's 1.8 million residents there. There isn't much place to run. It's basically just, just giant open air prison. They keep saying, well, why don't they leave? Where are they going to go? They, because of the Israeli Defense Forces, they're not allowed to leave Gaza, and Gaza is tiny. It's one of the most dense populated, densely populated areas in the whole world. Okay, now back to more quotes uh, from uh, different soldiers. 
infantry sergeant says the idea was if you spot something, shoot. If you shoot someone in Gaza, it's cool, no big deal. These are all different soldiers, different sergeants, uh, and obviously they wanted to remain anonymous uh, for fear of uh, serious repercussions if their identity is found out in Israel. Uh, here's a soldier in uh, IDF's engineering unit. He says, the briefing on rules of engagement was to open fire at anything you think should open fire at anyone you spot that you can be positive is not the IDF. The only emphasis regarding rules of engagement was to make sure you weren't firing at IDF forces. But other than that, quote, any person you see. From the very start, they told us, quote, shoot to kill. As far as the IDF was concerned, there wasn't supposed to be any civilian population there. But of course, the reality is that the Gaza Strip is filled to the rim with civilians. And that's why they pretend to do the knock. And in some cases, they actually do do the knock. Sometimes they, they send the a smaller bomb and then they wait a couple of minutes before they send the larger bomb to completely and utterly destroy the building but the civilians are everywhere okay now uh, and again they would say in their defense the Israeli defense forces say okay look th these guys should come out in the open there, there won't be any consequences to them sure there won't right and the reality is we tried really hard to, hard to avoid the civilians but as you see in case after case all these soldiers that were inside the Israeli Defense Forces says, no, we didn't. They told us to shoot anyone, everyone that was in the area. Okay. Now, obviously, other parts of the forces would disagree with this, but let's give you more context. Here's a first sergeant in infantry division. He says, if it looks like a man, shoot. It was simple. You're in a motherfucking combat zone. A few hours before you went into the whole area was bombed. If there's anyone there who doesn't clearly look innocent, you apparently need to shoot that person. Now, do you think there's any Palestinian in the area, especially a male, who's going to positively look innocent? That they're going to be absolutely certain is innocent in that area? No. Once they go into an area, shoot to kill everyone there. As long as you make sure they're not Israeli Defense Forces. Again, it's not us saying it, it's a report that talked to all of these officers and soldiers in the Israeli military. Here's another captain. He says the IDF distributed flyers informing the residents the areas we were entering and that anyone remaining in the area was in effect sentencing themselves to death that's what was said throughout the war uh, Netanyahu and other Israeli officials will come out and go what what why don't they just leave oh okay well but they can't leave Gaza oh well go far enough oh you didn't go far enough you were in a kill zone and so you sentenced yourself to death by being a civilian where you live okay uh, here's the independent explaining more. Other military personnel interviewed by breaking the silence admit that this was part of a deliberate effort by the IDF and say that inaccurate weapons were used to bombard neighborhoods before ground troops arrived. Now that's really interesting. They purposely, according to these sources, would use inaccurate weapons. They had accurate weapons. They would use the inaccurate ones. You know what that tells you? It tells you they wanted to kill civilians to intimidate the population. Don't mess with us. Now, of course, remember, they view it as they're defending themselves. Hamas has fired rockets into Israel. Now, yes, 2,200 people died, but seven civilians died on the Israeli side. Uh, a little over 60 uh, soldiers also died during the incursion. So Israel says, I got a right to defend myself. So, but when I come in, they claim they're being careful with the civilians, but in reality, the minute they walk in, it's a kill zone. They kill anyone who isn't uh, part of the Israeli Defense Forces. And they use crude weapons on purpose. Because the whole point is, don't you ever dare a rock, uh, fire a rocket. And some people will agree with that. They'll say, yeah, can kill the civilians. Who cares? Teach them a lesson, right? You think if you think people don't think that, you're not paying attention. Okay, unfortunately, the people in charge also thought that. To back that up, here's another military personnel. He says, shells, shells, shells. A suspicious structure, an open area, a field, a place where a tunnel shaft could be. Fire, fire, fire. There was a period of about five days from the moment when we were first called in for duty until there was a ground incursion throughout that entire time, fire. So when we saw, for example, uh, that bomb hit the four kids on the beach, killing uh, four obviously innocent civilians who were not doing anything except playing on a beach, Israel said, oh, a terrible mistake, obviously we didn't mean it and we're only targeting Hamas. There was no Hamas in the area at all. That's why that was such a huge story at the time. And now we know through the inside sources that 
No, use the crude weapons. You miss, you miss. Who cares? Part of mission accomplished. Finally, uh, Benny Gantz, and this is chilling. Uh, he is the Israeli Armed Forces chief. He was during the Gaza war. He says, quote, next time it'll be worse. Because Israel has to constantly grapple with the moral dilemma, but we need to protect our country. In other words, yeah, of course we meant to intimidate you, and we'll do it again, and next time we'll kill even more civilians. Remind me again who are the good guys. Remind me again why the Palestinians are so bad. Oh, right, because they target civilians on the other side. Interesting.